<laughs> well, th thank you so much, uh, Jurgen. And um, you're not welcome on our trips. I'm sorry to say that. <laughs> so uh, what I'm going to do is talk a little bit about who we are, um, why you should know our demographic, um, trends, where we go, what seems to be the future. And um, I'm going to use slides from our company. Our company is actually called the Women's Travel Group. The ECPS Consulting has a story behind it. We're the Women's Travel Group. Uh, we'll be 29 years old on January 21st, another important date in our nation. Um, so let me see if I can get to the slides. And Jurgen, if you don't mind, if you could unmute a loudy and Mary Barnett, because we work together and they okay. might want to type they in. Do it on their end. I cannot do it from here, but oh, if you okay. just unmute, no here. Problem. there's no restriction. Anyone I can know. unmute. Let them me stuff. see if I can share. I'm going to ask her to unmute so something will pop up on oh. the system now. <laughs> okay. Oh, success. Perfect. All right. Let me bring this over here. So um, my first comment, underserved, very much underestimated market. Uh, all of these, by the way, are real pictures from our trips. They're not professional, they're not models. These are us ladies. Uh, some of you might recognize yourself. The market for women's travel. Mm -hmm. I'll get back to this one. Every seven and a half seconds, another American turns 50. The boomer demographic is generally considered 50 to anything. Um, when I say anything, I, I'm not going to mention specific people, but we have had on our trips women in their 80s. We've also had women in their 30s. And um, a typical woman in her 80s might have been a doctor who was one of the first doctors at NASA. So we're an unusual group uh, besides being large. Um, half of us are still working. That's very different from our mothers and grandmothers. We are approximately 45 million strong. And now I'm only talking about women. We have the largest discretionary income for travel of any group, um, about 50% higher per person than the millennials who are the ones always in the travel news. 75% um, of adventure, culture, and nature travel is women. And I, I should back up a minute and tell you when we talk about the women's market, we're always using the word single, solo, alone. Um, close to half of the women who travel with us are married. So when we say solo, we don't mean single, um, as in not married or not in a relationship. Um, the interesting thing about this market is we're the majority of the adult education courses we like to learn. Um, we're the majority of volunteers in the United States. Um, we like to help. And uh, putting it in, this, in the, the guise of some of the big boys, Airbnb, Booking.com, and British Airways have recently talked about a noticeable rise in women traveling and women booking. So um, that's who we are. Less statistical, I have to mention that we are the first generation who did business travel, who did a junior year abroad, who joined the military and perhaps worked abroad. Um, we're the first who did work abroad, including myself. Um, we're the first who took a team tour um, maybe some of us were the first who did Europe on $5 a day. We are an innovative generation. Now, why do we travel? Um, it's interesting. Some of this is statistical. Oh, here we are, by the way, in Sicily in front of an enormous Greek um, uh, a ruin 
It, it is much more beautiful than it looks. And this is one of our larger groups. We tend to be more in the 15 range. Um, 20 to 36 say it's a bucket list. The bucket list, by the way, and Arvin, you'll be interested in this, is not always the Rome, Paris, London bucket trip. We're talking about women who've already traveled a great deal. Uh, some have, some haven't. The bucket list for these women might be Sicily, not Rome, might be Borneo, um, not Hong Kong. These are unusual destinations that catch the imagination of, of many, um, many boomer women. 51%, and these are some based on our studies and some based on public studies. I have the references if anybody wants them for future. Just to get away, um, life-changing events. We have had women in the middle of a divorce, just recovered from breast cancer, just promoted, just graduated at age whatever from law school. Celebrations. This is particularly important this year during the pandemic year. For women in the boomer generation, and probably every generation, but more so for us, a birthday is very significant. A major birthday requires a major celebration. And we will get a lot of women celebrating their birthdays with us. Um, there's the always wanted to go on a trip. We took a booking today, always wanted to do a cooking trip. Um, there's a need for friendship. One of the reasons I started this, and it's 29 years ago in January, was uh, at the time I was a banker. I worked in mainly an all male executive branch. I was bringing up two children. My husband was working and I had no time to make friends. We find a lot of women cannot find a friend to travel with and they're looking for a welcoming friendly group to join. Um, women will ask us or they'll tell us, we want to learn something. We want to give back something and we want to do it through travel. So uh, here we are in Easter Island, um, Rapa Nui, as it's uh, known locally. Um, this generation is different. We are reaching for a sense of adventure. I usually like to say, we wanna give you a surprise, a sizzle and a little bit of a scare. And I say that because women will come back and talk about uh, situations or speakers we've had that shook them up a little bit and made them look at the country in a different way. So here, here is one of our groups in Easter Island. Um, most of these women are well-traveled. Um, they had the confidence to take an exotic trip. Um, and we do these trips, by the way, with CETA Tours, who are our strategic partners. There's Mary down there in the corner. Um, could not do it without Mary, um, hat or no hat. Um, we're looking for conversation stoppers, uh, a getaway from a boring time, especially now. I find it very interesting, by the way, that if you read up on Victorian travelers, women travelers, you will find that they traveled for many of the same reasons, to get away, to add some excitement, uh, to avoid an emotional holiday. Um, we do. Christmas and Thanksgiving trips for that specific reason. And we try to, to place them in countries that are not normally associated with Christmas, might be Morocco, might be Southeast Asia. Um, so here we are, um, another slide. Uh, this was a lion that conveniently walked across the road for us in Namibia. Um, we do look for, for new destinations. We find that the boomer generation will trust us in a new destination. Uh, this is Namibia, South uh, Western Africa, formerly German Southwest Africa. Jurgen probably knows that name. Um, and this is how women shop. Um, most online shopping is done for women. Might be for clothes, it might be Amazon products but most online shopping is done by women. 
I already mentioned that booking.com and Airbnb have shown a big increase in women booking. Um, a statistic thrown around a lot and for many years now is that 85% of travel is booked by women. We used to think that was the executive secretary booking, but um, now we know it's women booking for themselves and women want details. It's interesting, I was looking up um, some statistics on women asking questions or not asking questions. And TripAdvisor came up with this amazing idea. They tell us that men will look at TripAdvisor and then move on. Women will spend up to a month going back and forth, looking at that destination before they book a trip. And we find this also, women want details. Women want to talk on the phone. Boomer women especially want us to walk through the trip day by day if necessary, and we're happy to do that. Um, boomers rely on reviews more than on social media. Uh, the one exception I would say is Facebook, and it is also pretty interesting. Um, and I say this as somebody who is over 65 and who travels extensively alone, that Facebook advertising and that's where we get a lot of our business from. Uh, demographic ends at age 65. So if you want to reach a, a demographic over 65, it's not available on Facebook advertising. I thought it was pretty interesting. Um, so let's move on. And by the way, I should, I should mention this about Namibia. Uh, we had a, a gardening journalist on that trip. I like to tell anecdotes. Stop me, Jürgen, if you, if you think you, you don't want to hear them. Um, she not only is a gardening expert, but she won a Pulitzer Prize for gardening articles. There is a plant in Namibia that doesn't grow anywhere else. It's a thousand years old. And this woman and her friend booked that trip to see that plant. Of course, we knew this because it was the talk of the trip. And uh, we all went to see this plant. I have to say, if you saw this in your yard, you would have yanked it out and thrown it in the garbage. But this woman went on the trip specifically to see this thousand year old plant. And I cannot, I cannot give you the name. Um, moving on to exactly who are we? Uh, Mary had me change this because it used to be said, and, and I, should, I should back up and mention that statistics on women traveling and boomer women traveling are few and far between. Uh, the CDC has some. Um, here and there, you'll pick up something that might be five or eight years old. So uh, putting all that together, here's a quick look at the boomer woman. Most besides the size, the age, and I've already mentioned the age is ageless. Over 50% are still working. We're more independent than our mothers and grandmothers. Most of us, and I say this as the traveling woman, have some college, not all. Uh, I can recall a woman who booked a trip with us who said, I hope he'll accept me. I drive a yellow school bus and I do it because every year I have enough money from it to take one trip. So we, we don't, we're not saying everybody's college educated, but quite a few are. Women travelers tend to be more religious. Women travelers in the women's travel group tend to be somewhat politically active. And making it more difficult to reach, not as technical as millennials and Gen Xers are. There are a lot of new areas for tourism. We are always looking for new areas. And I will tell you, the minute we put up a new area, I think Mary will agree with me, it will sell out. Um, because women are looking for that little bit of scare, or that little bit of sizzle, and a new place that they feel they will be safe in. 
one of the ways, um, for instance, we'll find new places is I do go to the London travel market and I look at where the Europeans are traveling now. That is where Americans will be traveling in five to eight years. So for instance, here, Ethiopia, um, I, sh I should tell you a little bit about our speakers and why a speaker is important to a boomer woman traveler. We want to see the other side of the country. We don't want another travel brochure. We want to hear the negatives, the grittiness, the challenges. We want to be part of that. So for instance, in Ethiopia, we had a speak two speakers. They were two gentlemen who had been in jail together as part of the opposition party. And they talked to us about the effect it had on their families. Um, in Albania, we had a gentleman from a formerly State Department, now freestanding economic development organization. As interesting as his economics were, what was more interesting to us was how very primitive Albania was only 30 years ago. So we try to be different. We know the boomer woman is looking for different as long as she feels safe. Um, here we are in the Yucatan. Um, Mexico is around the corner. Very few American companies do cultural and historical trips to Mexico. Um, and we believe and have seen in our experience that women are interested in Mexico. It has an excitement, a spiritualism, a culture, a beauty, the food. Um, I did not mention before the importance of food for the woman traveler. And I'm gonna say it in a different way. On the average tour, food is featured as three times a day of a feast. For most women, even though we like to eat well, we are not interested in a three hour lunch. We want to use the time to do sightseeing, to see something, to learn something. And so um, I think the travel industry should listen to that because that's where women are. Um, here we are some activities that attract a woman traveler. A way to make friends, a way to gel the group. Um, that way might be having a speaker who's a human rights worker in Chile and worked under Pinochet. That might be uh, listening to a woman who lives in Palermo, Sicily and tells us about getting divorced from a Sicilian man. Um, we like to learn skills. We like to learn. I think during this pandemic, we've all kind of looked back in our closets. What do we have that we can make something with, learn something from, cook, sew, do something. So here we are. Uh, making, I uh, can't see exactly what it is, but we're in Tuscany and we're making something delicious. Um, the pandemic has brought some new themes to travel. One is definitely cooking. Um, one is learning that you can walk around in a t-shirt and sweatpants and sneakers and nobody cares. Um, another is, and we see this right now, just beginning now, maybe it's because of the announcement of the vaccine, first time travelers saying, I'm not waiting anymore. And we're looking to a strong uh, spring and fall. Um, let me see what we have here. Close, here we are in front of the Brandenburg Gate. Some of the FAQs for women's travel are different. Um, we find, and I think Mary will agree with me, women are concerned about clothes. What, what, what should I wear? What they're really saying is, will I fit in? Um, special food needs, gluten-free, salt-free, sugar-free, 
uh, don't want to eat too much, don't want to gain too much weight. Um, women will always ask who's in the group. Am I the oldest? Am I the youngest? Am, am I the least traveled? Uh, I have a great example for that. Um, for those of you who might have remembered Susie Gershman, she wrote the Born to Shop travel books for Arthur Frommer. Uh, Susie and I were friends and we used to do trips for Susie. So we had a woman wanted to go on a trip, could not commit, could not commit. I finally got it out of her. She said, I'm a size 14. Do you think nobody will like me? So we had to explain to her that Susie Gershman, who's unfortunately has passed away, was five foot 10 and wore clothes like Omar the tent maker. So um, will I be left alone? Something new, and I, I don't know if, if other travel companies are experiencing this. We are getting questions. Can my children talk to you before I book this trip? It's very interesting. It's a family endeavor now. Um, will I have Wi-Fi all the time? My children want to call me. I want to call them every day. It's a, it's a new phenomenon um, arising from the sort of nervousness of the last year. Um, what if I don't want to do something? This is where the details come in. What if I can't, what if I don't want to walk on cobbles? What if I don't want to walk into that Mayan village because I'm uncomfortable uh, voyeuring on somebody's life? We get a lot of interesting questions. So other tours, um, a great variety, primarily um, more, more colorful. Um, or trips of a lifetime. And I would put Egypt, India, Morocco, Easter Island in that trip of a lifetime scenario. Um, so I'd love to answer some questions. And um, I'd love to say that we welcome everybody. We discriminate against nobody. Um, we find travel a great unifier. And I always say at the beginning of a trip, there are lots of pieces of the puzzle. By the end of the trip, there's a picture made from the pieces. And we hope everybody takes that picture home with them and enjoys it for a long time. So um, here we are in Italy. Another, another trip there in Barry. Again, new destination for most Americans. So um, that's pretty much what I want to say. And I'm um, happy again to share with anybody some reading lists or book or film lists. And um, maybe, maybe I should let you in on a little personal secret. And I'll finish with this. If you go back and watch Fun with Dick and Jane, and this is the one with Alec Baldwin and Tia Leone, you will find the travel agent's name is Phyllis. And why is that? Because my son wrote that movie. <laughs> so please ask me some questions and um, nothing is foolish as we say when people call. Yeah, and there's some question already I see yeah. on the chat box. Maybe if you can unscare your, unshare your screen then yep. uh, we can see each other. Okay, there we go. <laughs> and, and, uh, I'll, unscare, I'll unscare you. <laughs> so I, I think uh, uh, there's Diana in Jamaica. Yeah. We all know Diana. She she had a question. Hi, Diana. Welcome. Yeah, hi. Yeah, I'm very excited about the women travel because we've been doing that on a small scale in Jamaica. Um, but I wanted to find out what is the average stay period. Um, for women travel, how long can they come for? Can they come for two weeks or one week since they want to move around? Okay. Well, our tours um, range, most our tours are all overseas. We used to do New York City also. We felt it's a, a very good introduction to the whole idea of traveling by yourself. Um, we'll probably go back to doing New York City because hotel rates, unfortunately, uh, will be coming down a lot. 
And I say that unfortunately because New York has obviously been hard hit by the lack of tourism. Um, our, we don't do a trip less than a week. We, um, we know that by the time a woman makes up her mind to fly overseas, and she might live in Cedar Rap Rapids, Iowa, she might have to take two flights before she even gets to an overseas flight. So a week would be the minimum. Moving forward, uh, we feel that because of the pandemic, there's a big pent up demand. I mean, we're, we're all basically all going nuts because we can't leave our houses, right? Um, that we've now started adding a lot of pre and post to our 12 night trips so that women can extend them for more time and amortize that, that airfare. So a week would be the least. Um, what would you say, Mary, would be the most? Maybe three weeks. I would say three weeks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, New York City, we did as four nights. And if we do it again, it'll be four nights. So you should give me a jingle, uh, Diana, um, during the week or send me an email. I'd love to talk to you. We don't do anything in the Caribbean. We do quite a lot in Mexico. And that's again, because we were looking for the um, indigenous, the culture, the, the Mayan um, ruins, the, uh, the pyramids, the, what, what, um, what I'm pretty much described in the presentation. Okay, well, we offer communities, villages and interesting culture and heritage. Oh. Yes, absolutely. Give me a jingle and we'll have a nice talk. I will. Love to meet other women and travel. Do, yeah, do you have yeah. your email? Can you put it on the chat? Yeah, let me see how yeah. to do this. Yeah. And, and okay. otherwise, uh, Diana, feel free to just send an email on the form. All and right. Okay. It. And Phyllis actually has a profile under uh, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just, um, so you can just go and find her profile. It also has the email on okay. there. I'm putting two, I'm putting two, my Gmail and my formal company one, okay? Okay, maybe in the meantime, we can go to Arwin in Borneo in Indonesia. Uh, he's been a loyal participant in our events. Thank you, Arwin, for attending. Go ahead. Thanks, Jürgen. And Phyllis, great yeah. insight. Uh, I think Christy Berg is gonna be awfully happy, the ladies in red. Um, thank you for mentioning Borneo. Uh, first and foremost, uh, Borneo is kind of exotic. Uh, it doesn't cater to mass. It's very niche. And uh, what I particularly do is I do incentives. So I'm not a conventional travel agent, but incentive in the sense like what you've just described, uh, you know, uh, selective groups with uh, particular preferences and speciality in certain fields. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the the island is extremely laid back um and uh, again it's it's a very long haul travel coming from your part of the world um i would love to explore something related to women in this particular territory because something like this has never been done um we've got culture adventure nature ethnic and indigenous people it's it's unbelievable we could communicate directly so no worries on that but instead of going nuts, let's go coconuts if you really intend to come to this part of the world, okay? I don't know what you mean by let's go coconuts, but it sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> we've, done, sure. well, we've done one trip to Borneo. Okay, which part? Um, well, we packaged it up with um, stopping in Dubai on the way over and right. uh, continuing to Kuala Lumpur. <clears throat> Then right. Northern Malaysia, then Borneo, and then uh, bits of Indonesia. Okay. So I'll, okay. I'll ask Mary to be part of that conversation because uh, we developed the trips together. And Mal Mal Malaysia and Borneo. Yeah, 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 Malaysia. Okay. So yeah. you've got two states on Borneo, which, which, uh, which is yeah. part of Malaysia, which is Sarawak yeah. and Sabah. Yeah, we did okay. both. Perfect. Yeah. So if, if, you, if you chaps are seeking into something really exotic, really different from conventional tours, we could open up lines of communications. No worries. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so yeah I, can. I see a few names out there of people that I haven't met, but I know we've been on some of our trips. 
which is nice to see. And thank you for joining us. Any other questions? I mean, the kinds of questions we get, um, I got one today. Can you accommodate gluten-free? That's a very common question. And one of the interesting things is that the, the most, the easiest place to accommodate it is actually Italy because of, because it'll, they have developed all kinds of gluten-free pasta and foods. So that's quite easy to do. Um, we've also gotten questions like, uh, if I share a room with somebody and I wanna do uh, three minutes of meditation every morning, will she stand out in the hallway? We've gotten that question. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's so, a good um, <laughs> <laughs> um, we, We've had over the years, and I say this because I like everybody to feel welcome. Um, all kinds of women. We had a woman who brought tools on a trip, literally brought tools. And um, I happen to be there. I'm not on all of our trips. I make that clear. We have a staff. I had to ask her, why did you bring tools on this trip? She said, well, I was on another trip and I got locked in the bathroom and I'll never travel without my tools again. So it turns out this woman was an early engineer for Southern Bell. Uh, she, she knew tools. And when something happened with our bus, she fixed it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we, we have, you know, all, all, all kinds. Yellow school bus driver mentioned, the NASA doctor. Um, we've had some interesting situations with, I can think of one of a, a young girl starting at Hewlett Packard. She booked the trip a couple days before the trip because she got this new job and she was taking some time off in between jobs. On that same trip, we had a woman who had retired from Hewlett Packard and she mentored the 35 year old. So uh, we, get, we get a lot of that also. Um, I will say we once had three women who'd all dated the same man. <laughs> <laughs> so this gives you an idea of the kinds of conversations that, that evolve. But some of the conversations are fascinating, deep, uh, I can think of one, Mary, and, and when we went to uh, Chile, Patagonia, Easter Island a few years ago, I always go the first time we're going. Um, and the conversation was as follows. How can we, as a group of intelligent women who are both Democrats and Republicans, start a conversation that can go somewhere? And we decided to start the conversation with, we are all committed Americans. So we've had some serious conversations and we've had lots of fun. We've learned a lot. We've also given back a lot. And I will say that um, one of the proudest parts of, of being in this business, and, and, I, and I thank you, Jürgen, for developing this international connection, is learning to give, to understand what's happening in another country then do your little bit to help change it. Um, and I can give a hundred examples of where this has happened with women and why women feel this should be part of a trip. So and, anybody and, else want to ask a question? Uh, in the chat? Yeah, uh, Phyllis, hi, it's Lottie. Um, oh, hi, Lottie. Wanted, hi there. I, um, First of all, thank you, Phyllis. Um, I never tire uh, listening to you. I, I, it, it's wonderful. And I wanted to share with everyone on behalf of WTG that, of course, um, you are uh, Safe Travels certified by WTTC um, through CETA. Um, and that also includes Tour Care, which is sponsored by USTOA. So I thought it was um, important to mention to the audience that, yeah, you know, we are very focused on protocols and uh, the requirements for health and safety as we travel into 2021 and to 2022. And that, um, you know, your clients should feel very comfortable and very safe traveling with WTG because we've really focused on, um, you know, earning those stamps, earning those um, uh, certifications. We've vetted um, all of our uh, suppliers um, in quite a bit of detail. So I wanted, wanted to share that as well. Thank you. Thank you for mentioning that. I should tell everybody out there 
that how many years have we been working together now? Oh, oh gosh. <laughs> Mar- well, I so I got I me. Mean, and Phyllis, I think I met you back in, was it 2006, maybe I met I you? you I, I started, um, my first company was sold to a large tour company. And um, I I think I met you, oh, it's, I can't, don't even know. And it, time has no meaning, especially now. Yeah. Who yeah. knows what day? Who know, Who even knows what today's date is? Except me, because I knew the Zoom was tonight. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So like, we started in 2012. It's like endless jet lag. Yeah. 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 No, it's been a long time. And and if you um, out there want to look at CETATours.com, you will be very impressed. So we've had a long relationship, um, traveling in a lot of exotic places where you have to trust your colleagues. So let me see some more things are in the chat. Let's see who's chatting with us. That's a private. Oh, that's what about Australia? Um, you know, we've, we've uh, tried a lot of different places. Some of this is what we're hearing, right? Some of it is this, some of it is this. Um, we found some pushback on Australia. And the reason was, I think, that women did not want to fly that far unless the whole group went together. Is that, was that your impression, Mary? My, my other um, impression was it was English speaking and a lot of women felt they didn't need us for that trip. Right, it wasn't different enough or exotic enough to require yeah. that extra something that we bring to every tour, although right. Australia is still a great destination. Oh, wonderful, wonderful destination. Um, we, do, we do quite a lot in Europe as well. Again, the, the trip itinerary will not just be your ABC. It'll be interesting city, interesting countryside. Um, again, with the idea that uh, perhaps you're, you're comfortable going to London by yourself, uh, where I lived for many years, um, but you might not want to travel around the countryside by yourself because you don't know where you're going or the distances or so forth. Um, so we, certain places uh, we feel, and, and I say this also because I'm Mary Loudy and I, we are the traveler. We're, we are the t- typical traveler, maybe a little more experienced because we're in the industry. Um, but there are places we really want to go, not going to go alone. I'm, I'm wondering, um, so it's, well, we have an um, affiliation and um, I'm on the board actually also of the African Tourism Board. Um, yeah. In Africa, you have 56 countries, I believe, very yeah. diversified. Some countries are very well in, um, now I'm talking about normal time, times, not COVID times, mm. very well equipped for tourism. Others are in the beginning stage, others are not. But mm. uh, do, you, do you offer trips to Africa or you would be looking at Africa? I know we have a lot of members who probably would love to talk to you. I, I think I just gave a, a talk about the boomer generation to the Africa. Right, right, right. Yeah. Is that besides the, is, We've done quite a lot. Right. So uh, kind of, I'll do a, um, circumnavigation of the continent, which is easier. We've done trips to Senegal and Gambia. We okay. have been to Timbuktu many years ago. We I've did been there too, yeah. To Mali. <laughs> and when you said Timbuktu, half the people said, yeah, out of your mind. The other half said, when are you going? Um, South Africa, Namibia. So you're Patagonia. all over. I just wanted to clarify, but I, I, I listened to your presentation, of course. Oh, thank you. But thank I was <laughs> just wondering because there, there is a lot. Mary of- can come up with some more places, Madagascar, Morocco, what? Egypt. Wow. Um, the, the interesting thing in Kenya, mm-hmm. when you talk about Wi-Fi, there's Wi-Fi throughout the country. Very, very good Wi-Fi. Yeah. And we all- We've been to Ethiopia. <clears throat> We've been to... Um, uh, uh, I'm going to forget its name now. It used to be Upper, upper Volta. It's um, Burkina Faso. Burkina Faso. We've been there. Uh, we've been to a lot of places. I will say that going to Timbuktu was an experience of my personal life. And unfortunately, uh, one can't go there now because of... Um, Not safe right now. 
it's not safe. No. Um, I, I will share with you a quick, a quick note. We, um, on the trip was a woman named Jane Wooldridge, who was president of SATW last year. Jane's a journalist, uh, and she went on the trip to Mali. We uh, were transported out to a cliff, a vast African scene. On the cliff, 100 dancers came out and danced for us. If I could move my computer around, I could show you a mask that one of them was wearing. The, we all sat down on rocks. They prepared to dance. They had headdresses on that were 15 feet high. Hmm. Jane and I leaned against a rock because it was hard sitting on a rocky escarpment. The chief came over and nudged us. And we thought, hmm, nice, friendly. He nudged us again. We thought, very friendly. <laughs> then he said in French, would you and your friend please get off the sacred rock? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you can read about that trip in the Miami Herald. And it's, uh, it's a while ago. And she called it something like into Africa. So uh, yes, we got to Timbuktu. I think Timbuktu must be an experience for a lot of people. I can tell you my little story when I went to Timbuktu. I took Air Mali from Bamako. And uh, Air Mali was actually off limits for Americans at the time or for, um, for American embassy people. And there was a reason. We took off with a six or seven hour delay. And I, I saw the plane. It was standing literally right in front of the where we were standing at this airport. And I saw the pilot, I saw the flight attendant. So finally I just opened the door, walked out to the tower. It wasn't that much of a security there. And I said, so what's, are we going to leave? They said, we're just waiting to sell one more ticket. I said, <laughs> one more ticket. I said, <laughs> and, and I said, yeah, for tomorrow's flight is fine, but we need to sell it one more ticket because we have to pay for the fuel. Right. And I said, so how much is the fuel? And I don't know how much it was, but I went back in there Everyone pitched in a little bit, most tourists from Spain. We had some from Japan. And we, I gave the guy the cash and we took off. We flew to um, Timbuktu. We got there already, it was getting dark. And we only had one day. We're supposed to leave in the morning for Mukta, I believe it was. And uh, so I asked the local guide, so what can we do? I mean, is there any way we can take the next flight or delay? Oh no, there's only one flight a week. But what you can do, the, the Russians are, I mean, the pilots are Russians. And they love vodka. You can buy, I can sell you, get you a bottle of vodka. You give it to them because they're staying all year at the same hotel. And we're going to have dinner together. And then they get drunk and they, they kept their one flight. I said, that's a great idea. So we bought the bottle of vodka. And they got drunk. And then after, I don't know how many glasses, the pilot said, the flight tomorrow delayed. <laughs> so it worked out. <laughs> right. Well, the interesting thing about this trip, and this is a very, this, we, this is a quite exotic trip for people who are listening, um, is we did have one woman who took it just to get away. Just to get away. <laughs> so, uh, so that's, I think that's about all we've done. Can you think of any place else, Mary, that we've done in Africa? Not we, off the top of my head. We tripped. Sorry. Oh, Botswana. We've done Botswana, uh, Zim Zimbabwe, um, South Africa. Oh, you have been all over the place. Yeah, yeah. I think Diana had a question. Looking. She was raising. I was looking. I did a lot of talking to people from Ghana at the uh, London travel market. Um, always looking, and then of course we have to find places that we know women will be comfortable going to. Uh, Crafts, textiles, tribal information, um, history, these are all exciting to, to us who love to travel, whether it's in uh, you know, the French countryside or in Africa. It's exciting when you have those, that kind of digging to find the, the stuff that you're gonna remember. So let me see, there's something here. I think, I think Diana so erased, that she didn't click on the button, but I think she raised her hand. Right, I just wanted to share that we have a two week community tourism study tour 
where you have five days of entrepreneurship training, which is certified by our University of West Indies Open Campus, and then five days of visiting communities. And they, at the end of it, they get a certificate that they have completed a study tour of Jamaica and they are, or the Caribbean, because we do this for the whole Caribbean. Is that something that we could introduce to you? Uh, well, we should talk about it separately. Yes, I, I, I really, I just thought I'd mention it. Open mind. We've done, I should mention, we've done a lot of private groups also. Um, yeah. And it is fascinating which groups of women do get together. Uh, we had one group, they're all Hispanic, and they come from South Florida and South America. And about every other year they do an exotic trip. Uh, okay. One of the requirements, um, I don't, let me see if anybody's listening here, is <laughs> that they have to have wine at all their meals. So okay. that sounds like a fun group. Uh, we've done botanical artists. So you say to yourself, what's a botanical artist? How can they afford to travel? Well, what they, most of them do is the labels for natural food products. Mm. Kind of interesting. Um, we've done a group last, you know, the year before last of all high school principals from the Philadelphia area who traveled together, a group of women. Um, we've had two financial advisors come to us. Mm. Mary's, Mary's dealt with both of them who want to go on a trip with their female clients. Mm. So it is interesting. There are some groups that materialize by themselves, but the average woman, and I put myself in this camp, just can't get friends to travel with her. And after you ask four or five people and they all look at you like you're crazy, you really don't want to ask anybody else because it's uncomfortable. I remember when I had this idea so I lived in Europe for a long time, moved to Miami, uh, was in a finance job with a lot of vacation. And I would go around asking people, are you interested in, I have my, had miles. This was the beginning of frequent flyer miles. Are you interested in going on a trip? You're leaving your husband? Did he give you permission? <laughs> permission. You know, um, are you gonna call him every day? You know, it was all this kind of stuff. And I just said one day I'm quitting my job. I had a very good job and I'm starting something for women who want to travel. So, so I think we've answered all our questions and anything I forgot to talk about. Mary Loudy, thank you for mentioning the WTTC. It's very important. Um, and well, right. I think we've, I think we've done it. Thank you so very much for your time. I really appreciate it. Look forward to contacting you at a later time. And thank you, Kristen. And thank you for uh, joining in. Where, where are you? Portland, Oregon. Ah, yeah, you still have that daytime cheeriness. <laughs> oh, yes, a couple hours left, you're right. Thank you very much. Pleasure, pleasure. And thank you all for listening and uh, looking at our slides. And thank you, Laudy and Mary, for Absolutely. taking the slides and making them look snappy. Good to see you. Yeah, thank you, yes. Phyllis. Uh, I appreciate uh, you you're on this event. Uh, thanks for your support. And I hope uh, 